Today, I'm being dragged back into the conversation about interest rates. And of course, Philip Lowe, has he made another blunder? Are we looking at the strangest four horsemen of them all? Welcome to the Urban Property Investor. I'm your host, Sam Saggers, here to help you crack the code of real estate wealth. Today's show, Philip Lowe, should he go? Yes. Hopefully that ends up being the title of the show because we have a nut job in charge of the Reserve Bank. He's got a tough, tough job and he seems to be getting it wrong every time. Today, we're going to have a dig into his latest decision the decision to raise interest rates in April to quell inflation. Let's have a chat about it. Welcome aboard. If it's your first time tuning into the program, play the program in double speed. Get your life back. Of course, all the episodes I've done are lessons on real estate. Uh, in fact, most of my shows, I dig into real estate concepts, how to make money out of real estate, some tips, some strategies, tools you can implement, but no, Today, I'm being dragged back into the conversation about interest rates. And of course, Philip Lowe, has he made another blunder? Are we looking at the strangest four horsemen of them all? Well, I think we probably are. And it does seem that Philip Lowe is on track to win the Golden Gopnik Award at the end of the year, I can't see anyone else taking the mantle. He is certainly the front runner of uh, the four horsemen, that is for sure. And of course, uh, if you're not familiar with the four horsemen, real estate is a command-led economy. It's an interesting economy, the real estate market, because real estate is obviously a proxy for community. It's a proxy for jobs. And really how real estate is run here in Australia, the Reserve Bank seemingly acts like a fund manager for the real estate marketplace. And uh, it's, you know, almost defies belief that we've had a Reserve Bank governor come out and suggest to the marketplace that interest rates won't be going anywhere till 2024. Uh, and we're now sort of early into 2023. And we've now had 11 interest rate movements in that period of time. And of course, uh, the four horsemen, well, they all do different things. And the four horsemen, if you're not familiar with it, I have spoken about it in the past, but we have the uh, Federal Reserve or the Reserve Bank of Australia. We have the government's of Australia, in particular federal and state governments. We have the regulator, APRA, as, uh, as one of the horses. And then we have the big, powerful banks here in Australia. And all four of them can meddle and command the real estate marketplace in one way, shape or form. And uh, of course, if horsemen work basically without being in line with each other it can cause some devastating problems and we're seeing that in the united kingdom the uh, government over there sort of um, even coming up with the concept of of lowering taxes in a time where the reserve bank of uh of the united kingdom was trying to reel in money bring it back quantitative tightening and you had a two horsemen making two different decisions in that marketplace. And look at where it's at today. The, uh, the uh, CPI levels of the United Kingdom are over 10%. Yes, inflation is over 10% in the United Kingdom. In England today, the inflation rate is over 10%. So, you know, this uh, has certainly, um, you know, put interest rates on the map when it comes to the conversation because Philip Lowe, should he go? Should he go? Should he just stand down and get out of the way 
is he in a situation which is beyond his uh, comprehension? And look, how do these guys get these jobs anyway? I don't know. Like at the end of the day, what is Phillips Lowe's credentials? I'd love to know because most economists uh, and most bank economists were not predicting a interest rate movement. But is it unfair to sandbag Philip Lowe as being the worst governor ever? Or should we cut him some slack? Well, it is an interesting conversation because I have uh, talked about this in the past. If you cut rates too early, green shoots appear in real estate, in economics, and it creates some sort of false narrative that the uh, concept of not spending is uh, is going to occur, but actually spending starts to reoccur. And of course, we saw that with interest rate levels in the 90s when we had really basically uh, levels of inflation and of course, interest rates skyrocketed all the way up to 17%. Why did that happen? Well, at the time, really, no one dealt with inflation correctly. Um, and rather than kicking it to the gutter and squashing it by making sure quantitative tightening was unfolding, the uh, governors of the day mucked around with basically easing interest rates too quickly and it caused a real spike in inflation. So, of course, inflation is one of those things that property investors can benefit from because real estate carries pricing power. And, of course, we're seeing that in rents at the moment. Rents are certainly skyrocketing and given supply levels are very, very low, it's fair to say that those rents will stick around for a while but in saying that, I do not see inflation going back to the targeted 2 to 3% by the uh, Reserve Bank of Australia. So the current inflation sort of figures have just dropped below 7%. The Reserve Bank is trying to get it back to 2 to 3%. Will they ever get there? Will they need to keep raising interest rates to pull down inflation? Or are we now just living in a time where the Reserve Bank needs to perhaps adjust its target? It's an interesting conversation. And I'm probably in the camp that believes that inflation won't go back to 2 to 3% anytime soon. My uh, interpretation of the economic data is probably we're more likely to live in a 4 to 5% inflation rate marketplace for the next couple of years. That means, obviously, from our property investor's perspective, we need to increase our wealth by a minimum of 4 to 5% to keep up with the cost of living. Now, that's not good news for people at the bottom of the food chain because if goods and services continue to uh, rise off the back of of obviously inflation, if people keep spending, then uh, of course that you're going to see a level of inflation at that rate. And I think the way Australia's economy is geared, it's very, very difficult to, in some respects, return to a 2 to 3% inflation rate. We are going to grow at a pretty incredible level. If you think about all of the migration returning to Australia and migrants populating Australia over the next two years, it's a huge amount of people which is expected to use Australia. Uh, an extra 700 odd thousand people by some reports over the next two years. Now again, this is where we have the conversation is inflation transitory or is it actually sticky and what I find a little bit bemusing I guess is that the Reserve Bank has made a move to quell inflation 
But of course, a lot of that inflation, particularly the retail spending figures, has been driven from uh, basically transitory inflation. Transitory inflation is new migrants coming to artificially increase retail spending. Obviously, when people arrive, they don't have furniture, they don't have even probably enough clothes, they perhaps need to stock up to then become uh, settled as they just start to reside in Australia. So spending is going to increase if you're going to invite so many new people with a spending habit into the country. Now, the annoying part of all of that is if we cast our mind back to 2020, 2021, obviously the Reserve Bank had to cut rates to stimulate the uh, affordability around the problem of COVID. Federal government at the time also went a bit bananas with their spending. So you had too much spending and too many rate cuts happening at the same time at a global level. Certainly here in Australia, we uh, lit it up, you know, a trillion dollars worth of government debt, spending on stuff stimulating activity and of course low rates have fueled a big spike in inflation and of course the adjustment of the cash rate. But if we go back uh, to that period of time, I mean you could have asked uh, a bar fly in a pub, are the interest rates too low? And of course the bar fly would have got the answer right and said interest rates should not be a tenth of one percent. So the Reserve Bank at that particular period of time concluded that inflation was transitory. It wasn't going to stick. It was going to be this thing that would come and go very, very quickly. It was just a one-off effect, if you like. And of course, they were completely, completely wrong. Uh, It wasn't uh, transitory. It was caused by governments and Reserve Banks around the world flooding the world with too much money. So now we currently have some transitory inflation. The Reserve Bank, instead of putting interest rates up over a wider period of time, they really should have started putting interest rates up in early 2022, even late 2021. And they waited way too long to do it. And of course, the way they've rolled it out with this sort of month-by-month routine of uh, basically increasing the interest rate is also a little abnormal. It's not, uh, there really has been no reason not to put the hammer down and teach the market a bit of a lesson there and then. Why not, for example, just put the interest rate up by a whole percent and really start to showcase to the marketplace that you mean business. And of course, this would stop the amount of wasteful spending which has ultimately unfolded. Now, at the end of the day, the Reserve Bank is the Reserve Bank. You are a Adults, you need to financially look after yourself. You can't just rely on the four horsemen being kind. And I can tell you inside command-led economics, there are periods of time during your ownership and tenure of being a custodian of your real estate assets, you will have all of the horsemen coming at you. If it's not APRA, it's the banks. If it's not the banks... It's the government with some weirdo, basically, policies. If it's not the government, it's going to be the Reserve Bank using real estate to control inflation. And it's probably fair to say it's a little bit unfair just to put the cost of inflation on the real estate community or borrowers because... Uh, Here in Australia, obviously, we have built a lot of wealth off the back of real estate. And, uh, you know, in some respects, too much wealth off the back of real estate because 
of the way the Reserve Bank in the past has used it, real estate to create the wealth effect, to command the economy. When we need uh, us to feel wealthy, they have certainly used real estate as a bit of a proxy, like asset managers, to lower rates to stimulate uh, certainly demand. Um, and of course, you know, now we're seeing sort of a little bit of a reversal of that. But without question, the decision, I think, to adjust rates to 3.85% as a cash rate, it, uh, it should have already happened basically the month before. I mean, if you were going to do it now, why not do it the month before? Because all that was achieved by doing that, by not putting the rates up, was to create some sort of green shoot false hope in the marketplace. And of course, that again creates a narrative of more spending. People feel like the issue is dealt with. Now, if we think about some of the obstacles that the Reserve Bank Governor, Philip Lowe, needs to think through, there is absolutely transitory inflation occurring right now. Um, and it will disappear. And I can tell you right now, retail spending is, in my view, very transitory. Why? You shove thousands of new people into the country, they're going to shop and they're going to buy things to get started as students, as new visa holders. They're going to be looking for places to live, to, to rent, they're going to be buying furniture. They're going to be buying clothes. That's just the way it's going to unfold. It's transitory. It's not going to continue to happen. Once they have those goods, they won't necessarily need them again for a while. And of course, here in Australia, we have the mortgage cliff due to unfold. And the mortgage cliff, if you're not across the latest news about that, is... Three years ago, basically, a lot of people entered low-cost fixed rates at 2%. Now, they're coming off those uh, honeymoon fixed rates into a uh, principal and interest marketplace where they are going to see those home loans uh, jump in the cost to own them. And, of course, it's fair to say whilst so many people have been on fixed rates, they have not seen the effect of raising interest rates. So, of course, in their back pocket, they have money and that money is still circulating into the economy. So, we understand that that temporary situation where the line share of their household income is not going to a mortgage is about to change. And, of course, July is the number or the month where most fixed rates terminate and people join the rest of us in a variable interest rate market, obviously paying more for money. So that temporary issue of a large proportion of owners on new rates is going to dissipate. And of course, for people who all of a sudden have a higher mortgage cost, one can argue more money is going to be taken out of the system by virtue of banks. So, of course, we're going to see a lowering of inflation again because there will be less spending on goods and services. Right now, many people who are still on fixed rates have, uh, have not necessarily had to go through the household budgeting that many other people are already doing. And so we're going to see uh, a lot of mortgages have to enter the arena. And of course, this is going to mean that we will see again a slowdown in inflation as there's less spending from a household perspective. So the migration effect is transitory. The fixed rate Mortgage cliff is transitory and it's going to result in a inflation rate dropping. 
but it's going to be stickier and it takes time to bleed this out of the system. And that's why I honestly think 4% is probably a more realistic target for the Reserve Bank to achieve over the next 12 to 18 months than 2%. You've got a long way to go to get inflation down to 2% per annum. And of course, if you don't understand inflation, just think about it. If you buy a packet of chewing gum and it costs a dollar and the inflation rate is 4%, next year the packet of chewing gum is going to cost a dollar and four cents. And so obviously at a 7% inflation rate, it's too high. It's moved the, the monies uh, and the cost of, of goods and services is, is accelerating too quick. You know, 10% like the United Kingdom, it's too quick. Like a packet of chewing gum going, jump going from $1 to $1.10 is, is a big jump. Um, but I think it's also unrealistic to say, well, it's going to go back to a 2% CPI rate. I just think, uh, you know, we need to be mindful that it's a grind. It's, it's, we're taking the stairs down on this thing, not the elevator. And we're going to have to grind it out to, to get this thing called inflation out of the system. That may also involve another interest rate uh, adjustment or even uh, two interest rate adjustments. But again, I think we have started to see inflation drop and there's transitory inflation occurring right now. And I guess the, the amazing part is when there was no transitory inflation, the Reserve Bank governor was saying it's transitory inflation, not putting rates up. Now it's transitory inflation. He's putting rates up when, in theory, perhaps economically speaking, it would have been easier to hold and really allow the natural situation of migrants basically shopping from day one and, you know, that that being over and done with. And, of course, the mortgage cliff borrowers basically coming into the economy of uh, of new household spending. So, but hey, who am I? I'm just sharing the news. But uh, certainly the big economists around Australia were a little bit insulted, I think. I think they were uh, a little bit taken back off the Reserve Bank. The only... Uh, Economists to get it right were the CBA economists who incidentally think that by May 2024, the cash rate will come back down to a around 2.85%. So they got it right going up to 3.85%. Will they also get it right coming back down to 2.85% in May? I don't know, but I think if inflation gets down to more of about a four to five percent target or or annualized CPI, it'll probably feel a less of a problem. And I think down at that point, rates will start to to drop down again. But you don't want this hyperinflation situation, and of course, that's what. Philip Lowe is very, very worried about. He doesn't want the UK effect of 10% inflation and really an inability to shake it off. So he's doing something about it. But I do also think that there are other ways to go about it. You can't necessarily just pin borrowers for inflation. Inflation is a major cause really by government stimulating economics, commanding the economy. And uh, in some respects, the fact that there is around 30% of society with a loan, they are given the burden of 100% of society to solve. And really, the other way around it is really governments using fiscal policy to reduce inflation. Um, they can do things like cutting spending. They can basically sideline infrastructure projects. They can reduce the amount of money circulating in the economy. And of course, 
reduce demand and thus lower prices. Really, it's it's one way to go about it. And of course, they can certainly remove money out of the economy by increasing taxes. So in my viewpoint, the two horsemen, if you like, the government and also the Reserve Bank, are a little bit sort of juggled here because you've got some pretty powerful infrastructure projects which are unfolding at the moment around Australia. And uh, are they needed right now? Could they be deferred for three years? They probably could. They could be put on hold. And again, without that influence of more money circulating in the economy by virtue of government spending, you would reduce inflation, of course, this would eventually see the cash rate drop. So is it really uh, just punishing households if government is the biggest spender? This is, this is the, the, the crazy part, is the battler is paying for government spending through the cost of their mortgage. And so we can say, well, what do we need to strip out from government? And I've said this, I've said this for a, for a long time. Here in Australia, we have way too much governance. There are government jobs left, right, and center. There are whole towns that the whole economy is based on a government department being in that town. And I openly say I would not invest in those volatile marketplaces which are just reliant upon a government hospital propping up the township. Why? Because in periods of inflation, you're going to potentially have to strip out government to lower the cost of living for everybody else. And uh, how government strips that out is always a bit of a challenge because governments don't like stripping themselves apart nor do they see it as a vote winning exercise to abandon infrastructure projects or nor do they see it a vote winning exercise to basically uh, you know not deliver on their promises so it's an interesting dilemma that we face as consumers here in Australia that it's really the two forces at work are two of the big horsemen, the government and the Reserve Bank. They kind of uh, are the ones causing the issue. And of course, the uh, one has to respond to the cause and effect of basically quantitative easing and stimulus, which occurred certainly through the last federal government, which was Scott Morrison's government. So it'll be interesting. You know, we are we are in an interesting uh, situation at the moment. And of course, there are now mortgage prisoners, people who basically are not planning on uh, anytime soon selling their real estate. And really the catalyst to that is... They can't sell and rebuy and really most people inside of real estate are both sellers and buyers. They are selling and rebuying. And of course, when you can't necessarily rebuy because you can't borrow as much as you uh, technically may have, then people are, are pretty well going to hunker down and of course this will create less turnover of stock. And uh, certainly for many people, they are now uh, in a situation where they've just got to ride this particular situation out. They have to ride out their mortgage and, uh, and of course, get themselves to another part of the micro cycle. So, Philip Lowe, should he go? Well, uh, I tell you what, I think um, the government's handed down something like 51 recommendations to uh, change the way the Reserve Bank of Australia operates, making sure there is some other better checks and balances into the way it conducts it, its affairs. 
Um, we will soon see. I believe uh, we are due for a new governor later in the year. And of course, these recommendations, perhaps they will certainly uh, do some good. I don't know. We never know. But where I find things a little bit bemusing at the moment is very much we are now seeing transitory inflation, which if you strip that out, potentially uh, we do not need to increase rates further because we do have a lot of borrowers about to tighten their household budgets. So that's my take on uh, the latest move by uh, Philip Lowe. Should he go? I'll leave that in your hands. All right, folks, that's it from me today. I'll catch you next time as we talk more real estate. Thanks for tuning in to the Urban Property Investor. To never miss an episode, make sure you subscribe to the podcast on your favorite app or on YouTube. I would love it if you could give the show a rating and share it with your friends and family. In between episodes, you can always keep in touch with me by connecting on social media over Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn. Until we meet again on the next episode of the Urban Property Investor, take care and bye for now.